All right, over energy, women's tour, 2018, stage one. Highlights, I don't really wanna, um, there's not much footage, so this is the best I'll be able to find. So you can see this is the lead out. Basically, there's a sharp left hand corner here. You can see Jolly and Dawes, second wheel, looking good. Corin Rivera is there. You've also got the whole Alec Cipollini squad for Chloe Hosking. Um, and it's pretty good stage, and Martina Bastanelli, I think, does better for them. And if you're into me, to go quite a long way to go, slightly uphill finish, so in reality, you want to be pretty far back, but Jolene Dior just doesn't really care about any of the positioning. She just absolutely launches it here, and just no one's going to be able to get on her wheel. Conor Rivera, you can see, coming on the left-hand side, getting a decent draft. People on the right-hand side, Martin Bastanelli, but again, no, no, one's, like, no one's close. Like, Dior just has this so easy, just doesn't even try. Like, literally, like, of course, she's trying, but, like, it's like no, literally no one gets anywhere near her. It's quite incredible, really. Um, so that was basically the finish. And so I'm just going to go into the power data because women's power data is, well, quite frankly, very annoying to do because most of them, for some reason, think that everyone's so interested in their power data that they want to steal it. So they just don't post it. It's like, come on, like, let's be honest. Your power data is not that valuable and everyone wants to see it. And the more if you showed your power data more, people probably watch women's cycling more. So it'll be good because I'm always interested in power data. Anyway, so we have Jessica Allen's ride here. So you can see, generally, it didn't seem very chaotic day. 181 weight average power, so maybe 200 normalized, which for these guys is not really very tough. Like the FTP is probably like 250 to 270 for like the average uh, woman domestic. And then the top ones are closer to 300 and then their weight is obviously dependent. But generally it seems like the women's, there's not like the same discrepancy in terms of power, like the top women who are top climbers, also as a top time trialist. It's not like guys where you get people like, I don't know, Tony Martin, who can bang out like 470 watts or whatever, but there's no way he could climb because he's just so big. Women's cycling doesn't seem to be as big um, when I've been analyzing the power. So anyway, you can see here, pretty chaotic final, 190 watts the last 17 minutes. There's a bit of an effort for them, but nothing too crazy. And you can see here, she basically does a turn here, Jessica Allen, of about 320 watts for one minute 40, which is a, d a fair, fair old effort, averaging 46 k's an hour, and basically just making sure Julian DeHoor is in a good position. And then I think she does one little last pull here, um, which is like 400 watts for um, about, how long is that? 20 seconds or something, probably just trying to either move up in position or just like help help her teammates to move up. Uh, I'm not sure if she was on the front. We don't have any footage from there, so it's all a mystery. And then she basically pulls off at the end uh, and just cruises up the last bit. So you can see that this is where the camera footage came from, just this last corner here. Um, I have actually been to Southwold a couple of times. Uh, I do know this finish. It's a little bit of a hill. I don't know, I've, actually, I've never ridden it, but like just from going around, you, can, you know, it's a little bit of a hill. Um, but anyway, we do have some other people. So we see Chloe Hosking here, 198 weighted average power. She's a little bit heavier. Um, again, nothing too crazy. So if we go on the results, actually, Chloe Hosking didn't do that well. Martina, Marta Bastianelli came second. Conor Rivera, we have power data. Well, we don't really have power data for everyone else. Custom wheel, just not good position, maybe too far back, slightly uphill. I don't really know. Normally, I feel like she'd be a factor, but maybe the slightly uphill finish didn't really help her that much. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go on to... So we look at Chloe Hosking's power data. She didn't really... She had a decent sprint. Like, look at the watts she hit. Uh, she had, like, 940 watts at the... So to be fair, 940 watts at the end of a stage is, like... It's pretty decent, like, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not obviously not a sprinter, but like, I, can't, I can do a thousand, like, thirties to fresh sometimes, so it's like, it's actually a fair old, fair old effort from, um, old, uh, Chloe Hosking, but I guess she just wasn't in a good position, and maybe the, the, um, the going uphill slightly didn't help her, I'm not 100% sure, because she didn't finish, wait, where did Chloe Hosking finish? She didn't finish anywhere near, Whoa, what, this is real random, she must have had shocking position or something, because, there's no way with that watts that she, she'd be that far down if she had good position. Um, so anyway, Chloe Hosking, interesting power as well. We also have this uh, woman called Roseanne Silk who came 21st. Uh, just again, like 180 watt average power. Um, not too casual. I mean, if we just look at like cruising in the bunch, like averaging 38 in a big bunch, it's not, it's not mega stressful. Like you can see here, a lot of freewheeling and stuff. Um, so yeah, if we look at the power curve, I, I don't think it would be absolutely mega today just because it's mainly a flat day for them. So yeah, like 400 watts for a minute or something, just the last, the last little bit. Um, nothing, nothing absolutely nuts to be honest. Um, you can see here, so there's a little bit of spikes up to 800 watts here or there, but it's still pretty, pretty cash. Uh, we then have Corin Rivera, who I believe weighs potentially 50 kilos. I don't know, but her power data is real odd. Like I don't understand it at all because how does she manage to do literally 40 watts less, like weight average power, compared to everyone else? 
Like, I don't understand. Like, yeah, you might be light, but like, come on, it's not even that hilly. Like, there's a, what, a thousand meters of climbing, like 136K. Like, that's not that hilly, let's be honest. Like, yeah, it would help, but like, maybe that is the answer. I don't know if her power meter's gone or what. Because when you look at her sprint, like, the maths on me, uh, you just don't understand. Like, you look at her sprint here, um, and you're just, I just don't understand it. I feel like it just can't, it just doesn't add up. Like, so for her sprint, we'll just go for this bit. She averaged like 500 watts for 30 seconds, which is pretty solid to be fair. But she only had a max of like 784. And then I guess she was moving up the whole time. Like if we watch, watch the highlight bit again, you can see like from here, she's over here on the left hand side, never really gets a good run at it. Um, like you can see she's sort of sprinting and then like hiding behind people and sprinting. So maybe, maybe it does make sense. But it just seems weird to me that the power is that low because I guess she does like sort of 600 watt bursts and then goes down. So I'd say like Junior DeHaul is probably doing what, like six, 700 watts for that, like maybe 700 watts for 30 seconds and maybe 800, 900 watts for 10 seconds. That would be my prediction more or less because she did take that pretty easily and pretty convincingly. Um, but yeah, I guess maybe also Corin Rivera has a whole team looking after her. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. Like if you're... If you want to be a pro woman, like it's it's hard to say what what numbers you really need to do. Like guys, it's pretty obvious you need to do. If you want to be a good climber, you've got to do maybe six point three to six and a half watts per kilo. Then you get signed for a world tour squad. Like you just look at James Knox and people like them. It's pretty chill. But if you're a woman in like a sprint stage, I guess you need to be able to draft in the pack, have good bunch skills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, that's just required. Like anywhere, any sort of level you're riding at, really, and then be able to hit sort of eight to nine hundred watts depending on your weight. Uh, at the end of a sprint, um, which is, you know, not, not to be sniffed at at all. So it's good, good numbers. I just wish everyone was a bit more transparent. Uh, I didn't, I did another, uh, power analysis of, um, some of the Michigan Scott people who were climbing, but again, like I just want a bit more data. Like here you can see 180 weight average power. I'm wondering if she did any more work because I just don't know because the stage is just like not really broadcast. I think it was broadcast in the UK, but I'm not there, so I can't get it. I don't really know. But anyway, the thing that always confuses me um, is just this. 5.7 watts per kilo for 18 minutes. Like, that's actually huge. Like, I'd say, like, that's better than, like, most men uh, who are, or probably similar to, like, top male domestiques for pro, for, like, continental teams, unless you're a climber. Like, climbers can do six and a half, maybe six, six to six and a half if they're a decent domestique. Uh, sorry, not decent, obviously, a decent um, continental rider. But 5.7 watts per kilo for 18 minutes, like, that's fucking good. Like, if you just took that her to a race, like, that's at an end of a race, not even fresh. So fresh, maybe 6 watts per kilo for 20 minutes, more or less, maybe 5.9, 5.8, 5.9 for 20 minutes. Like, that's solid. Like, that's really good. Um, so this Nevin person, she also managed to win the time trial as well at, like, 5.8 watts per kilo, only 293 watts. So obviously, the, the watts are impressive. Uh, CDA is probably super low. But this thing that always confuses me, because if someone can bang out 5.8 watts per kilo, then I feel like it's just absolute chaos. Like, this this chart here, like, either her power meter is fucked, or this chart is wrong. Because it says maximum FTP of world class is 5.7, and she did 5.8 for, like, 20 minutes in the middle of a stage. So, like, that doesn't really add up. But anyway, and then again, you see here, like, max one minute power, 9.3, so... Assume the average sprinters for women's maybe 65, 70 kilos. It's hard to say. Maybe, maybe, maybe only 60. Probably like 540 to 600 watts maybe. Uh, and then best five minute power like low 55s, 55 times 6.74. Uh, I'm really try <laughs> judging my mass. I'm probably like four, 400 more or less. Um, 370. Yeah, maybe 370 to 400 for five minutes. Like it's hard. So you can see here we're like. The winning move was 296 watts, 5.2 watts per kilo, uh, and with a maximum power of 730 watts. So again, it's like, the power just doesn't really add up. Here it sort of does though, it's like, this is La Course, and it's just saying like, how to hang in, you only need to do like 200 watts, which is I guess what we've seen today. Uh, a lot of these riders only doing 200 watts, especially if they're, they're light and then they're doing less, less watts, but it's still just rather, um, rather confusing all this power data i don't really understand how it all adds up maybe because there's just not as much like knowledge and not as much like data being collected for the women's peloton that it's harder to like figure out how strong everyone is and because people are more like hiding it a bit more while the guys it's pretty well known 
Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoy this. I'll probably do some more power analysis on some of the climbing stages, which is pretty, pretty, which will be pretty exciting. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. So cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next vid.